So Anthony Smith is picking up steam again. He's back with some incredibly alarming statements, things that have just left me flabbergasted. Now I'm talking about some of the things that he's been saying this week on the Believe You Me podcast, and there's a whole lot to talk about. There's coping with his losses. There's the John Jones take that he had, which was just really something that made me think, how is nobody batting an eye or pushing back or just calling him out for what he's saying? Because some of the things... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Anthony Smith has been talking about John Jones. Anthony Smith has been talking about Jake Paul. We're going to get to the most interesting stuff first, and then we're going to talk about a lot of his comments on Jake Paul. And again, I'm not the biggest Jake Paul guy. I wanted Nate Diaz to smash him. Of course, I knew that wasn't going to happen, but we'll talk about that after. Anthony Smith is trying to throw his hat into the mix. He's trying to get a little bit of a, a drama fest going between Jake Paul, and he kind of views himself as the big dog in the yard. He views himself as a guy that Jake Paul's got to check in with when it comes to getting any respect from the MMA community. But we'll get to John Jones first. Bisbing had Tom Aspinall on the podcast, and of course, Anthony Smith is the co-host. And Bisbing, as usual, is going to be glazing any UK fighter big time, especially Tom Aspinall that's on the verge of fighting for a title that is, you know, UK born and all this, and Bisbing's high on him. Bisbing then gets Anthony Smith to chime into the conversation, calls him out for having shared the cage with John Jones, and here's what he had to say. Well, so many amazing guys, but I just feel like I'm completely different to anyone who he's fought before, and I feel like I could beat him. Well, this is, you know, Anthony no. did five rounds with Mr. Jones. Yep, uh, the I floor know. is yours, I Mr. Know. Smith. I will shut up now. But I, I think you bring up an interesting point that I didn't even consider like obviously we've been talking about you versus john jones for a while and one of the biggest problems i had with john jones was his size he he was so big and he, he was just hard to get to you know and, and but I, and i wasn't i wasn't fast enough to close the distance i was definitely faster than him i was definitely faster than him but i wasn't fast enough to close the gap of of the range and stuff but i guess i never considered that you're gonna be faster and bigger okay so listen the first thing he says 100 it's hard to close the distance on john jones the guy is extremely big he's got the longest reach ever we understand that i was definitely faster than him like you you see how he says it too uh, i was definitely faster than him he has to have something he has to have something over john jones again i just don't get how people don't bat an eye to these things it's crazy i was definitely dude Anthony Smith is not known for being fast. He's like the big bruiser, the guy that marches forward and plods forward and tries to get a big hook off on you, tries to get you into the clinch to land a big dirty elbow. That's who Anthony Smith is. He's not Mr. Speedy Gonzalez. John Jones, when he was fighting Anthony Smith, was coming off of his win over Alexander Gustafson. That was a dominant win. John Jones' kicking game looked unreal against Anthony Smith. His speed completely mopped the floor with Anthony Smith's speed. So I was definitely faster than him. That's not the case at all. It seems minuscule, but just saying that in an interview is just so fucking ridiculous. You didn't have speed over John Jones at all. Not for one second, okay? And this is another theme that, that I've been seeing from Anthony Smith that's been slowly brewing and slowly building up. He's been taking a couple of losses. I think his physicality has started to decline and he's been coping with it in a very specific way. And he's chalking up a lot of his losses these days to the fact that he's just simply not as athletic, okay? Not as physically gifted as someone like John Jones. And that is the case. Like, obviously, that, that's no fucking mystery, all right? 100%. John Jones is a freak of nature. That's why he's literally one of the best fighters to ever exist in the first place. But let's get back to this thing that Anthony Smith's been building up, this theme, what it is, and he's talked about Ryan Spann, his next matchup, and how he's beat Ryan Spann. Respect to that. That was actually Anthony Smith, in my opinion, his cleanest and best performance ever against Ryan Spann. Beautiful win from him. Finished him, knocked him down, subbed him. Amazing win. But what Anthony Smith said in an interview recently, I forget who it was with, but he said, I think it was with the Schmo. He said, if I had 20% of the athleticism of Ryan Spann, I would be a champion 10 times over. I would, I would have been a world champion a long time ago. And I just seem to go out there and be myself and not worry about Ryan Spann. Um, he has an incredible skill set. He's athletically, he's fucking amazing. I mean, it, he's big, he's fast. It, if I had 20% of the natural gifts that Ryan Spann had, I would have been a world champion a long time ago. That's, that's how much I respect his game. 
dude, again, it's one of these things where like Anthony Smith views himself as being like one of the most skilled and proficient fighters that ever walked the fucking planet. You know, he's so good on the feet. He's so well-rounded. That's not the fucking case, dude. It ain't the case. Fuck. He's not that guy. Anthony Smith does his best work when he plods forward and acts like a big bruiser. Right? Again, dude, he's pretty decent, man. <laughs> Anthony Smith is pretty decent. But like this whole idea of if I just had 20% extra athleticism, I'd be a champion. That's just coping to the fucking max. That's coping. You're not losing your fights because you're losing 20% out on extra athleticism. You're losing the fights because you aren't necessarily good enough to win them in the first place. <laughs> How fucking hard is it to understand? Oh my gosh. When I hear these statements, I just think to myself, what the fuck is he saying? What the fuck, bro? Listen, man, I fucking like Anthony Smith, man. I love watching his fights. I'm rooting for him. I actually root for Anthony Smith. I know this sounds crazy, <laughs> but he says some things that are just crazy. It's like, bro, if Ryan Spann had like, let, 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 if Ryan Spann had Magomed Ankalaev's skill set, you know what I mean? Then we're talking champ. Anthony Smith's skill set is not this thing that we look at as, holy, oh, he's got the fucking, all the skills in the world. I just can't believe he's not a champ. If only he was 20% more athletic, he would have been a champ along. That's not the case. That's not the case, bro. So yeah, I, I, listen, I think that it's a, it's a low hanging fruit. It's a cop out. It's just a, a, a lame, cheesy way to talk about, you know, the L's when it could just be that you weren't good enough to beat some of these guys a while ago. Like you would have been a champ a while ago if you had Ryan Spann's athleticism. That's probably not the case, bro. And, and hold on. I just want to say this. I pull back on that statement. He didn't say if I had Ryan Spann's athleticism. He said if I had 20% of his athleticism. Dude, Ryan Spann is a good athlete. We're not talking about LeBron James here. You know what I mean? We're not talking about the best fucking athlete to ever walk the planet. We're not even talking about John Jones at all here. We're talking about Ryan Spann. Okay, great. He's like a big, powerful hitter that it has some speed. Like, okay, 20% of what he has is not making you a world champion. All right? If you have 100% of what he has, if you're, if you're Ryan Spann's athleticism... For sure, you're going to be better. 20%, it's not going to make that much of a difference. So let's just get to the Jake Paul stuff. Listen. So Michael Bisbing is talking about how Anthony Smith has been taking risks. Jake Paul hasn't. And that's pretty obvious. Anthony Smith's fighting in the UFC for belts. This is like, you know, the premier fighting organization on the planet. He's not a, a multimillionaire Jake Paul that has everything handed to him and all, you know, cherry-picked perfect opponents from the finish. That's clear. I respect Anthony Smith heavily for like getting in the fucking cage and fighting the best on earth. So they're talking about how Jake Paul is like this bully that cherry picks old men opponents that are like three times lighter than him. And this is all true. But then Bisping brings up Anthony Smith and tries to create some kind of a contrast and says, Anthony's out here fighting Magomed and Goliath. That's a bad man. He's out there fighting Johnny Walker. That's an absolute monster that's in his prime. That's, you know, a freak athlete. And this is all true. Anthony Smith is fighting the best in the world. That's what the UFC is. You're fighting the best. You're not there to, you know, make a big boxing payday. You're there to become a fucking champion. And that deserves respect in and of itself. But then Anthony Smith takes the floor and chalks his loss up to sometimes you just zig instead of zag and you get caught with some shit. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You didn't just zig instead of zag. Okay, you weren't good enough to beat these guys. This, this is what I, I just can't stand hearing and having nobody mention it at all. I, I guarantee you that... <laughs> nobody likes to see someone cherry-picking opponents. People are inspired when they see somebody go into a fight that maybe they think this guy's got no chance of winning mm -hmm. and he pulls it off. It's not attractive to see someone cherry-picking fights. So that's... And it goes against the whole ethos. You want to test yourself. You want to... It takes a real man to step into an octagon against someone that you're like, I don't know if I can win this, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to mm -hmm. work my balls off and I'm going to, I'm, I'm man enough to give it a shot. Like you went in there against Magomed Ankalaev, a guy mm -hmm. that just fought for the belt and went to a draw of Jan Blachowicz, right? That guy is a bad man. Johnny mm -hmm. Walker is an extremely large guy. You've been in there with John Jones. You've been in there probably many times. I'm speaking for you many times. I'm sure where you're confident because that's who you are, but it's not guaranteed that you get the victory. Yeah, none of them are. None <laughs> yeah. of them are. Like you don't ever like you're confident and you know you know what you're capable of, 
man, sometimes you zig when you should have zagged and you end up in some shit, you know, it's just, man, sometimes you zig when you should have zagged and you end up in some shit, you know, it's just. Listen, we're all aware that Anthony Smith is fighting in the UFC where it's about winning the belt. It's about becoming the best in the world, right? You're, you're not fucking cherry picking opponents. You're fighting guys that are in their prime. So respect for that. But for him to chalk up his losses to Magomed, to chalk up his losses to John Jones, especially, and of course, Johnny Walker too, sometimes you zigged and you should have zagged, which is, <laughs> this is so unbelievably delusional. And it's just ridding yourself of all responsibility from losing. It's basically saying to the whole world, it's not skill. It's not that these guys are better than me. I just zigged and I could have zagged. Like, oh, I just got caught with a good shot. Or, oh, he just caught me with a, with a lucky position. And the fight was over because that's high-level MMA. That's not the case. He was dominated by John Jones. He was shut down systematically with leg kicks and rendered to a man that could hardly walk against Johnny Walker. He had absolutely no answer for him for 15 minutes. This is not I zigged when I should have zagged. Like, oh my gosh, this is so annoying when fucking people say this stuff. They ch like, I, listen, if Anthony Smith had went out there and he had gotten KO'd, all right, and he, or, or he had gotten taken down and submitted with an instant... That's something in which I can say, bro, sometimes you zig and you should have zagged. Like, for example, um, Alexa Grasso submitting Valentina Shevchenko, who's like one of the best women's fighters to ever exist, when she threw a spinning back fist or a spinning back kick, I'm sorry. And then Alexa Grasso took advantage of the spinning attack that missed, got the back of Valentina and choked her out. That could be chalked up to sometimes you zig and you should have zagged. Even then, it's like, oh, you got outdone with skill. You made a mistake. Your opponent capitalized on it because they were good enough to capitalize on it. But that's a quick instant. You know what I mean? Like, fucking hell, what, what's another quick instant? Justin Poirier getting caught with a head kick. It looked like Justin Gagey was getting the better of him with skill. It looked like Justin Gagey was outstriking Dustin Poirier. So even that, to me, wasn't zigging instead of zagging. But you get caught with a head kick. What the hell are you supposed to do about that? You know, it's one shot that puts you out. When you're dominated for 15 minutes, when you are absolutely mogged and the floor is completely mopped with yourself against John Jones, that's not fucking zigging, dude. That's just, you're, you're getting destroyed out there, man. What the heck? How are you going to fucking say this thing? And fuck you! You know, every fighter can sometimes not want to just admit that they got the fucking shit beat out of them because they weren't good enough, you know? And that's just the hardest thing to admit sometimes. But in my opinion, that's probably the best thing you can do. It's just to say to yourself, dude, I wasn't good enough. I lost the fight. When I can admit that, that means I have to get better. You know what I mean? And Anthony Smith has actually came out here and told us some of the things that he doesn't do well, which is checking leg kicks, for example. And that is something that, that I respect heavily for him to actually admitting I, I suck here and I need to get better there. But again, like... This is just one of these statements that they can fucking flow past some people <laughs> and they'll never think of it. And they just look at Anthony Smith as some, you know, really level headed guy that is really all there. And he's fucking saying some crazy shit, some crazy shit that, that just you need to be able to call him out for this. And now he's going to talk about like Jake Paul. And that's his issue with Jake Paul is that Jake Paul isn't testing himself against the highest level guys, against guys that are in their prime, decent boxers. And dude... It's a little nuanced for me. Like, listen, Jake Paul is beating up on these old men that are past their prime. He's supposed to go out there and finish them. When he doesn't finish them, it's a little bit pathetic because it's like, bro, you're, you're supposed to destroy Nate Diaz. Even if you don't knock him out cold, which you're probably never going to do because that's Nate Diaz. We're talking about doctor stoppage, maybe, you know, body shots. Get him out of there. You know what I mean? But Anthony Smith is going to say that because Jake Paul's not taking risks, he doesn't deserve the respect. And you know what? Listen, I don't, I think that's fine. That's an okay statement to make, but Anthony Smith is going to try to throw his hat into the mix and he's going to try to challenge Jake Paul. And so let's hear this. And if he really wanted our respect, he could get it. He could, like, if that's what he, like, he's heard everything that I've said about him. Number one, he's never, ever fucking responded because he, like, because he knows, number one, I'm not talking out of my ass. I'm not trying to disrespect him. I'm not, I'm not like attacking him personally. I don't give a shit about him personally. And he knows that all he has to do is come to the gym. Okay, so Anthony Smith is now talking about if Jake Paul wanted our respect, he could get it. And he's heard everything I've had to say about him. He's never fucking responded. You know, here's the thing about that. I don't think Jake Paul even knows who Anthony Smith is. He knows who Michael Bisbing is. I'm pretty sure Bisbing's even had him on the podcast. I'm not 100% sure. Bisbing's a big name. Bisbing's a, you know, loud brouch, former champion, 
from the UK that like, you know, has this big personality that, you know, a lot of people know. I don't think he knows Anthony Smith, who's a little bit more under the radar. So to say he's definitely heard what I have to say, he, he needs to earn my respect. Anthony Smith thinks he's like the big dog of the MMA world. He thinks he's that guy you got to check in with, the, you know, the gatekeeper of, you know, earning respect. He's that, he's the big boss. You know, what up boss, man? What up big man? What's good, man? That's Anthony Smith. He thinks he's that guy. And in my opinion, I don't, th I don't think Anthony Smith is like on anyone's radar when it comes to being cool with the MMA world. Did you want to be cool with the MMA world? You get your respect from Nate Diaz. You get your respect from Jorge Masvidal, Michael Bisbing, you know, fucking Rampage. Dude, all the OGs. Anthony Smith is like, you know, he thinks he's that guy. He thinks he's like the big dog that everyone will, oh, Anthony Smith, that's a fighter, bro. That's a bad man. Like he's a, he travels all over the place. Like if someone was talking like that about me, like if Jake Paul was like, Anthony Smith sucks, that dude couldn't beat his way out of a wet paper bag. Like I would DM him and say, well, let's train together. Like, yeah. If he wanted the respect, like that's how we do it as MMA fighters. Like you got a problem. We can, we can just spar. Like we can talk it out in person. We can, we can fight it out in the gym when nobody's around. There's no cameras. You shut the gym down and we do it. And I, and if he, and if he's as good as he thinks he is, or is he's as good as he says he is, I'll come on here and tell you. <laughs> this is unbelievable. He's basically saying that if Jake Paul wants any respect from the MMA world, he can come and he could, he could spar me at the gym. You think you're all that? Come and spar me. We got a problem. You got a, we got a problem. Come and spar. Jake Paul doesn't have a problem with you because he doesn't even know you exist. You know, what, what is this whole thing that he's got a problem? We could solve it. If anyone had a problem with me, I'd DM them. I'd be, be going to their gym. He flies all over the place. Just make it happen. He's not going to fly to Nebraska, okay, to spar you, Anthony Smith. It's not happening. Why is, dude, if this were even the case where Jake Paul cared at all about getting respect from MMA fighters, where he doesn't give a fuck about that, he would be fucking trying to get respect from Izzy. He'd be trying to get respect from Pereira. He'd be trying to get respect from like, you know, one of these big time strikers, someone like a champion, Leon Edwards, Kamaru Usman. Dude, he's not trying to get respect from little old Anthony Smith. Smith has been back at it again, man. I wanted to make this video. I've been listening to some of these comments that are just outrageous, outrageous statements. And I couldn't let them slide. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Until next time. What's up, guys? It's Lucas Tracy MMA, and I'm wondering if you're trying to look like Yoel Romero. Well, if you don't have his genetics, that's impossible. But I could at least help you get halfway there with my ultimate lifting program. And if you're a beginner, my novice lifting program. These are programs that I've used my nine years of experience in the gym to make so that you can put on as much muscle as possible in as little amount of time as possible. And it'll also give you a variety of workouts so that you never get tired of the gym. So if you're interested, click the link in my description. And for a discount, use code MMA for 30% off.